All right, y'all ready for a word? I'm ready to preach it. I'm ready to preach it. So I've been, after studying on Genesis chapter 11, the story of uh, the Tower of Babel, um, and through this rebirth and rebuild series, I just can't get away from this thought, and I want to I lay this at your feet. I can't get away from this. Um, about lost, undone, pagan people, pagan people, in Genesis chapter 11, worshiping devils, listen to this, worshiping, worshiping demons, lost, undone children of Israel, building a tower to heaven, saying, we're, we're going to do it our way, and we're still going to touch God. Now, they, they, they were worshiping demons and, and devils, and building a tower, and it got God's attention. God said these words, I've got to go down, I've got to leave my throne. I've got to leave heaven, and I've got to come back down to earth because we got a problem, Houston. We got a problem. He said, these people, these lost pagan devil worshipers, we don't like talking about this stuff. Listen to me. It's happening in the South Central. Yes, it's happening. It Maybe your neighborhood. But there is still devil demon worship. You don't hear this a lot behind pulpits today, but it's real. It is real. And it got God's attention. I've got to come down from heaven. I've got to go down and I've got to confuse this language because if I don't, listen to this. God, him, God himself said this. If I don't, anything, anything they put their minds to do, they'll be able to do it. And what bothers me about this is this was lost, pagan, devil-worshipping people on the same page getting heaven's attention. Now, church, I, I just want to stop here really quick. I felt the Lord say into my heart, it is time. Now, listen to me. You may not want, want this, but I, if we're going to make a difference in this world, especially in South Central, we cannot be disunified. The body of Christ cannot be disunified. I'm going to say it again. The body of Christ cannot be disunified. We cannot be. We've got to be unified. We got to have the same vision. We got to be going the same direction. We got, watch this, you ready? We got to speak the same language. The same language. And I just need somebody, hallelujah, that believes the holy word of God and has a fire shut up in your bones that you need to get out today. It's time to rebirth. It's time to rebuild. It's time for the church to unify. It is time to start speaking the same language. It is time to start going the same direction. It is time to plunder hell and to populate heaven. I need somebody to believe that with me in here today. We, we got it. We need to do this church. Y'all want to mess this world up? They know what's wrong with the church. What's right with the church? This world needs to see, listen to me, a New Testament church speaking the same language. Unity. What is unity is when you and I tie. When you and I tie. Now, if you don't want a unified church, this church is not for you. I'm going to be honest with you, okay? So listen, church, we do not need to lose the language of heaven. Heaven, watch. Now I'm going to mess some good little Baptist up right here. Heaven has the language. Now, I'm not talking about tongues. Because every time you mention language, everybody goes, well, I don't know, they don't speak in tongues. They didn't. Watch, I'm not talking about tongues, although tongues is real. But I'm talking about heaven has the language and watch this. So today what I want to do, I want to do part four in this series, Rebirth and Rebuild. Everybody say, Rebirth and Rebuild. Rebirth and Rebuild. Rebirth and Rebuild. Rebirth and Rebuild. Heaven has a language. I want you all to lean in. But if we're not careful, listen to me. If we're not careful, we as Christians and we as churches, if we're not careful, we'll lose that language. We'll lose that language if we're not careful. Listen, here's what's sad. It's almost like a foreign language when, when anymore that when a pastor stands up and when I stand up or a pastor stands up and speaks on the Holy Spirit. It's almost like a foreign language to people. It's, it's a foreign language to Christians and churches anymore that, that if someone gets healed, 
Or if, some, if there's a sign, wonder, and miracle inside of the local body, it's almost now anymore, it's odd. It's supposed to be normal. Do y'all realize that today somebody needs to get healed? Y'all realize that today God is here by appointment straight from heaven, not to entertain you, but to say, you know what? I got an assignment for you. I want to do something in your life. I don't want us to sit there no more. In church, we got to get unified. Y'all say, help me. Somebody say, you got to get unified. We got to get unified. But it's, it's almost, I hear this all the time from Christians. It, you, when God shows up, they call it odd. They, they, they call when, when the Holy Spirit shows up, well, that's different. They, they call it confusion. They call it confusion. But God calls it the language of heaven. God calls it the language of heaven. So y'all with me, I'm ready to dig, go deep, and give y'all some keys to live a great life. Here we go. Nehemiah chapter 13. Nehemiah chapter 13. I'm going to read verses 23 and 24. Then we're going to skip down and read verses 29 through 31. So you can mark this in your Bible. I have preached on this before, but I'm going to take a different twist today. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 23 and 24 and then you can go down to 29 through 31. Here we go. Read now the NIV. The Bible says, moreover, in those days, listen to this. I saw men of Judah who were married, who married women from Ashdod. Listen to this. Ammon or Moab. <laughs> Half of their children spoke the language of Ashdod. Oh, this is so good. Or the language of one of the other peoples. And here's what's sad. And did not know how to speak the language of Judah. Oh, my, my. They spoke a different language. They didn't even know how to speak the language of Judah. Remember them, my God, because they defiled the priestly office and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. So I purified the priest and the Levites of everything, watch, foreign, and assigned them duties. Each to his own task. Verse 31. I also made provision for the contributions of wood at designated times. And for the first fruits. First fruits. And it says, remember me with favor, my God. Now listen to this. The people, the children of Israel, broke a covenant with God. Here's what started happening. They started mixing holiness with ungodliness. How many of y'all see that in this world today? Yeah, they try to mix holiness. They try to live good on Sunday, but live like hell on Monday. They, 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 they tried to, to, live, to have a holy life, but they were living an ungodly life. They, here's what they do. They stopped sacrificing to God. They stopped sacrificing to God. And if this was a word for today's generation and a right now word, this is it. They started sacrificing to the world and all of her activities. Somebody say, I see that today. Uh -huh, I see that today. They started speaking the language of the world. That's called Ashdod. When you do a Greek study word on Ashdod, it means worldly activities. These children of Israel that were born in, the, in Israel did not even know how to speak Judah. They didn't even know how to speak their own language. Because they started trying to have godliness and ungodliness and sacrifice with no sacrifice. And they said, I'm just going to do it the way we want to do it. And that's what we see today. The Bible says they did not even know how to speak the language of Judah no more. Oh, my, my. Help me, Holy Ghost. In other words, Judah means worship. They lost their worship. <laughs> they lost their sacrifice. They lost their heart for Jesus. They lost their heart for his holiness. They lost their zeal. They lost their fire. They started living in the world. They started paying more attention to the Ashdod, the worldly activities out there, than they did what was going on in here. I'm preaching better than y'all are acting today. What I'm trying to preach today is this, that the 21st century church, that is me and you, is in danger. I'm telling y'all, we are in danger. We're in danger of, of the spirit of this modern day age. Lord, you, we live in a time in the world today that people say, well, I'm just as good as they are. That may be true, but do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? That's what stands out. I'm not saying I'm better or greater or lesser than anybody. But when I was seven years old, 
I made a decision as a young man. And I didn't understand it. Lord, I'm 49 and I still don't understand it. But I made a decision as a young man to follow Jesus Christ all the days of my life. I was 14 years old when I preached my first sermon. It was ugly. Shadrach, Meshach, and watch him go. It lasted less than five minutes. I know y'all still want me to go back. But here's what's happened to me over the years. It's not that I'm greater or lesser. But I know the language of Judah. I know the importance of us coming together, touching and agreeing. And speaking the same language. You want to make every devil in hell run? You let Christians come together, touching and agreeing. Being unified and speaking the same language. Every devil in hell will pack its bag and go back. Oh, there's power in this house. And we just get lackadaisical and we sit back and say, well, whatever happens is going to happen. No, 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 no. I'm looking at some attitude today. I'm looking at some atmosphere changers. I'm looking at some people that know how to grab the horns of the altar and pray. Somebody help me today. I believe what I'm preaching. Because I've been to the valley of shadow of death. I've been flat on my back in an emergency room. I've had my sugar up to almost to a thousand. I know what it's like. And I'm telling you what. And I'm telling you the truth. I know the nurses may not know what was going on in room 419. But Rafferty does. Sometimes you just got to know what to do. But if you are sending a mixed signal. Say you speak Ashdod one day. And Judah the next day. I'm looking at some Judah praise in here today. We are in danger of, watch, the Bible says, if we do not learn the language of Judah, what if I told you we can lose a generation? We can lose a generation if we do not learn how to speak the language of Judah. And church, can I be honest with you? This world is in really bad shape, but if we lose another generation, you think it's bad now? We can't afford to watch our babies just go off to the side and say, honey, just do the best you can. No, no, no. We can't afford that no more. People and Christians, I, I think it's so funny. Church today, they say, well, is it really all that important to pray like that? Is it really all that important to preach about the Holy Spirit and about the Judah language? And is it really important? You tell me. Y'all tell me today. How important is prayer in your life? How important is it that the church needs to be unified, speaking the same language? I'm telling you, it's very, 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 very important. Today, our young people, they don't know what it's like to pull down a stronghold. No, they don't. Today, people don't know what it's like coming to the altar and you stay at this altar until you hear or you feel heaven shift on your behalf. I'm telling y'all today, in the name of Jesus Christ, there's power in this house. I'm telling y'all, in the name of Jesus Christ, if we come together and set our minds on one place, one location, touching and agreeing, and start speaking the same language, I'm telling y'all, something supernatural will birth in this house. The problem with churches, they're not unified. We're not. And I'm telling you all the unction that God's got in me. My, my job for 2021, this is not going to be a long resume. My job is to get Elkhorn Baptist Church speaking one language. One language. One, everybody say one language. Yeah, we don't want to ask God. We, we don't want a worldly language. We want the tribe of Judah to rise up. That when Courtney's going through something, she knows she can come to the house of worship and say, you know what? I need help today. And we as a tribe of Judah will get around her and help her and pray her where she needs to be. Somebody say amen. Come on, somebody. It's important. It's important. Let me show y'all how important it is. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 through 9. I love this. Here's how important this this language is Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 through 9 oh hallelujah the Bible says Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 through 9 NIV the Bible says we got this one down 
Love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. How many times have y'all quoted that one? Let's read on. See, a lot of times what we do, we, we read one little verse and we say, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. We know that. But how many of you know there's a verse that precedes that? That precedes that. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. I feel the Holy Ghost. Impress them. Impress them. Well, my kids don't want to hear it. Impress them. Impress them on your children. Hallelujah. Talk about it. <laughs> when you sit at home on a Saturday night, twiddling your fingers and not have nothing to do, talk about it. When you lie down and when you get up. In verse 8, I love this, and this is what I speak over, over all of us today. Tie them, the language, the word of God, as symbols on your hands. My God. And bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. I love that. Here's what he's saying, that heaven has a language. Heaven has a language. And listen, if we don't, if we don't preach it, and if we don't sing about it, and if we don't live it, how many of y'all know we'll lose it? Yeah, 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 that's right. You talk about what you love. 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 I am crazy, madly, deeply in love with God more than I am with Dana. Let me go this side. I am madly, crazy, deeply in love with God more than I am activities. Somebody say amen. I am madly, crazy, deeply more in love with God than I am my livelihood. Woo! I am crazy, madly, deeply in love with God more than anything in this world. Well, Brian, you're a preacher. No, 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 no. No, no, I am a child of the one true king in love with the master. I need somebody who loves God more than you love anything to give him praise in this house today. Come on, don't just sit there today. Show your neighbor how much you love him. Don't let your neighbor out praise you today. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hey, feel the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, here's what I know. That's why it's important for me, watch, to talk about the Holy Spirit. To talk about God. To talk about Noah and Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, yeah, it's, it's important. Because here's what I've noticed. Y'all ready? If I don't talk about it, I'll lose it. And the Bible says, the Bible says, man of God, mother, mama, man of God, it says, here's how you win your children. Not by buying them stuff. Not by missing church and doing worldly activities. I'm preaching good. That's called Estod. Estod. That's worldly activities. How many of you know that you're at the right place at the right time today? How many of you know God's got purpose on your activity here today? How many of you know that God says, I don't want you just to sit there. I'm talking to you today. It's something. God says, you want to train your, your children? He says, everywhere you go, talk about Jesus. I double dog dare my kids say, Daddy, you talk about God too much. You talk about a Holy Ghost whooping to say I'm old school half of us all of us didn't get what we deserve here's what I'm saying it's the Bible says put a make it a symbol on your hands put a put a stamp on your foreheads that when when you walk in they're going oh God here he comes again Jesus 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 oh my God oh my God oh my God I get that kind of stuff all the time even from preachers. Yeah, Willie. Really? Yeah, well, here comes Raph for that Holy Ghost, Spirit filled pastor. But he still believes in prosperity, still believes in the Holy Ghost, still believes in all the gifts, signs, and wonders. Yeah. I sure do. I sure do. Because when I get down, he's still up. When I'm down, he's up. I need somebody to give him praise in here today. 
I'm telling you, I feel a shifting in this place today. I feel heaven has a language. Well, I ain't going to ever act like, like you. you ain't, God didn't create you to be me. All I'm asking you all to do is worship. All I'm asking you to do is don't pay more attention to the world than you do the word. All I'm asking us to do is to be Christians. Is that really asking a lot? Well, Brian, you don't know what side of the track size boy. God owns that track too. <laughs> oh, I feel it today. Yeah, God owns everything. You can watch this, you can't escape him. You can't escape him. God's got you today. And he'll do whatever it takes to win your heart. Whatever it takes, to, he'll do it. And listen, school's getting ready to start back. Yeah. School's getting ready to start back. But here's what I wrote down in my personal notes. Before destiny leaves Shane Rafferty goes to school, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I bind anything that's trying to come against you today. I take authority over the enemy. And I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your life going in and coming out. Hallelujah. I need somebody to give God. Yeah, we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to start speaking a language. Because see, that's called heavenly language. It's called heavenly language. It's called heavenly language. You say, Brian, do you believe in tongues? I have to. It's in the Bible. Does everybody speak in tongues? No. Does everybody got the gift of healing? No. So how come we believe that a 14 to 16 year old little girl who never had been with a man can birth the Savior, but God can't give a gift? God gives gifts all the time. But when the church starts saying, ah, we just don't believe in that, that's called Ashdod. That's called Ashdod. That's called Ashdod. Listen, one thing I'm never going to back down off. Y'all might as well get this in your spirit. Right now, if you're watching on Facebook, I will never stop giving Jesus Christ the praise, honor, and glory. And I finally believe... What he started in me in 1971, he's going to finish whenever God decides to take me home. I need the gifts. I need the callings. I need the Holy Ghost. I need God. I need Jesus. I need you. You need me. Whether you like it or not, we need each other. But the only way we're going to get along is if we speak the same language. If we speak the same language. Here's, here's what I have found to be true in my personal life. Y'all ready for this? Somebody say amen. How many of y'all glad you come to church today? Give God praise that you're here alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm almost finished. Anything you don't talk about will eventually become lost. I'm going to say that again. Anything you don't talk about will eventually become lost. Anything that you don't talk about will eventually become lost. Y'all understand? And when people look at your life and all they hear about is <laughs> basketball, football, worldly activities, and livelihood, how much money you made last year, watch this. It's all about you. It's all about you. We need to be a finger pointing back to him. That when someone says, hey, what's God doing for you? You don't say, well, he gave me a job. I'm making six digits. No, no, it's all about you. Man, if it had not been for God, I'd be going straight to hell. Amen. Listen, don't get tired of telling people the redemption story of what God done for you in your life. Don't do it. Don't get tired talking about Jesus Christ. Don't get tired. I had one man in my family. And every time, every time we'd go over to my mom's house. He would say, is all you talk about is Jesus? And I said, well, I've tried everything else. It didn't work. <laughs> Women didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are y'all okay? Boy, y'all got uh, the cold wave through here really fast. Alcohol didn't work. Well, Brian, it numbed you. Yeah, but the next day was hell. <laughs> I thought, I'm at I'm, I'm the right church, right? I'm an Elkhorn, not First Baptist of Frigidaire, right? Everybody good, right? I've tried everything else. 
Everything else let me down. But I got a God when I was down, he reached down and he pulled up. He got me out of the ditch. He got me back on my feet. He gave me a platform where I can give him praise. So I'm going to talk about my best friend, Jesus Christ. I wish somebody would help me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you don't talk about it, Chris, isn't it amazing? Pagan lost people. Y'all think about this. Devil worshipers. Now, Brian, you done gone deep. I'm, I'm just telling you that's what it was. Did not know Jesus Christ. They had him here, but not here. And they said these words. Here's how we can build a tower to reach heaven. Nobody in this camp can speak another language but devil language. And God stood up and said, no, no, no. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to leave my throne. And I'm going to go to earth. And I'm going to confuse them. How many of you know we still got a God that will stand up on his throne and come to earth if he has to? He did today. He's here right now. So let me ask you something. If a lost, pagan, devil Worshipping generation can build a tower and almost make it to heaven. How much more can we do it as the body of Christ if we come together, touching and agreeing, being unified, same vision, same purpose, same language? We can build a tower. Whew. Let me let me lay this in your lap. Praise team, you guys come. Judges chapter two, verse ten. Sad, 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 sad verse. But I'm going to read it over you. Because here's how important it is. Watch. We do not have time. Elkhorn, y'all lean in. Facebook, y'all lean in. Everybody lean in. We do not have time to waste on who's right. Is the Democrats going to win? Or the Republic? I wish, listen, time out. I wish we would talk about Jesus Christ more than we do a democracy. It's mine. I can preach how I want to preach it. If we would talk about Jesus more than we do Democrats. Let me go this side. If we would talk about Jesus more than we do Republicans. Boy, you can tell when God's up in the house. Because some of y'all mad at me right now because I talked about what you believe in a Democrat and a Republican. Watch this. I'm going to be good. I got to be spirit driven. All that is fleshly and earthly and it's going to dissolve one day here on earth. But I know a name above all other names that his name is Jesus Christ. Every knee will bow. Every Democrat will bow. Every Republican will bow. Every Baptist will bow. Every Pentecostal will bow. Everybody will bow at the name above all other names. His name is what? His name is what? Don't forget that name. Because that name, I want you to listen, young people, y'all listen. That name will get rescue you out of hell. That name will save your marriage. That name, hallelujah, will bring the prodigals back home. That name, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost. That name. Well, Brian, you just radical. You call me what you want to call me. But I know the name. And I'm telling you, listen, church stuff, y'all, listen. One day this building's going to burn. But that decision you make today is eternal. And I'm going to, let me read this to you. Fill it up, Glenn. Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. Ooh, I feel the Holy. Y'all stay It's okay. Y'all stand up. Because if y'all stand up, I'll get y'all out of here. Lord, I'm sorry. I just lied. <laughs> I'm joking, y'all stand up, come on, for real And you look better when you smile How I many you know people say Here's what people, Christians look like, Mark I started thinking about this You ask them, what's God done for you? Well He's alright to me, but I got this going on I got that going on I'm not making light of that, but They bow their heads And man, they, 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 their lip gets all and all of a sudden, everything becomes about you. Everything.
everything becomes about us. I know a lot of people that call themselves Christians. I don't want to hang with them. I don't want to hang with them. Because they are the meanest, stinking people I've ever seen in my life. And that is not God. God will give you joy. God will give you peace. God will give you patience. God will, <laughs> you got to do it. So, Judges 2.10, the Bible says, look, we'll put it up there really quick. It's so good. I want you all to look at this. so good. Judges chapter 2, verse 10. This is sad, Beth. Sad. I thought about you because God has appointed you, and I'm going to remind you what God did. God has appointed you to change the next generation. Listen. Another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what He had done for Israel. Willie, that is a sad verse. Another generation grew up. What are we going to do about it, man? You're called to preach. Don't be a politically correct preacher. Because you'll fit in well with the world. God called you to stand out, not fit in. You've got the calling and the assignment of heaven upon your life. And I commission you in front of all these hundreds of people. To preach Jesus Christ. And he'll do the work. Hey! You receive that? Another generation grew up who knew neither. They didn't even know the Lord. What? Or what he had done for Israel. You know why that happened? Because the people went. When God gave you a testimony. I'm looking at some of you. When God healed you of cancer. And you stop talking about it. Nobody won't know what the Lord done for you. When God saved me. And he healed me. And I'm not going to shut up about it. Because he is worthy. Of all the praise. That's in my soul today. He saved my marriage. He saved my daughter. He saved my son. And God's going to do it again for somebody here today. Our job is do not let another generation, Nolan or Joe, you know, Lord, the way, and I'm, I'm going to call on you. Listen, I, I'm intentional this morning. You say, Brian, why'd you call me? Because you're sitting up front. You're, you're up front. The only way your children will not know about Jesus is if you don't tell them about it. It starts at home. I am the preacher, not of Elkhorn Baptist Church. I am the pastor of the Rafferty household. If anything happens in my house, it's got to come through the strong man. And I'm going to bind him. I'm going to cast him out. I'm going to stand at the doorway. I'm going to plead the blood of God. I've got a symbol on my hand and it's on my forehead. I've got to talk about Jesus because nobody can do me like Jesus. Nobody. 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 Who I feel. How many of y'all feel the Holy Ghost? Who I do feel it. So what language are you speaking today? Come on. Judah, thank you. If somebody was listening. Judah! If you're speaking Ashdod, that means it's a worldly language. Watch this. You feel the Holy Ghost. Your friends don't know you're saved. Well, Y'all can come to church all you want to. But there's got to be a shifting. That when we walk down the school's hallways, you ain't got to verbally say it out loud, but you can raise your hand. See, y'all don't know what I said. But I just told Satan, take your hands off God's people. God's in the schools. We need our teachers to be Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled teachers. We need to speak Jesus, amen? But I'm telling y'all in Jesus Christ, what language do you speak? Do you speak Ashdod? Or do you speak the language of Judah? Does the world move you? Or does God move you? Come on. Some of y'all get so happy that your stocks didn't fall. Oh, they will one day. <laughs> Everybody good? You're putting more in your 401k than you're putting in the offering plate. <laughs> it's 
bounce off him, Greg. Yeah, yeah, we want truth until truth comes. We're paying more attention to Joe Biden and Donald Trump than you are the Word of God. I just stopped by 3145 East Elkhorn Road. Tell somebody, don't lose the language of Judah. Don't stop talking heaven. Jesus still works. He's still on the throne. He still saves. He still delivers. He'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. He sure will. So, this is my third time and I'm closing it down. I'm landing the plane. I want to put this on the big screen. Listen to this. Unification. Listen. This is so funny, Beth. Can you see? You're struggling a little bit. Your, your eyes. She crying. <laughs> so happy y'all up here. I can pick on you again. So I had all my sermon done, Aaron. And I said, oh, I can't wait to preach it. And God's like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, God, thank you. He said, I'm not done. So you can ask my wife. I said, God's speaking. So I called Destiny downstairs and I called Dana. We had a little team meeting. I said, okay, what goes with unification and what goes with communication? And so we all met together. Because y'all know touching the green is good, right? I get my family involved up in my sermon. They've done heard like 10 times. So they'll be the first one at the altar today. Hallelujah. Unification is heaven's communication. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Unification is heaven's communication that leads to God's manifestation. I worked hard on that. God gave that to me. Unification is heaven's communication. So even though we may disagree about things, we don't about Jesus. We don't about, we, 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 we may disagree about a lot of things, about the Holy Spirit and tongues and all that other stuff. Watch this. None of that right there saves you. It's a gift. It's a gift. And watch this. You're no lesser or no greater with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He's in you. It's just a gift. It's just a gift. But unification. Y'all want to mess the world up? Let the world look at Elkhorn Baptist Church unified. 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 Because unification is heaven's communication that leads to God's manifestation. I'm going to stick with that one. Somebody give God praise in here. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm done. Finish, finish, finish. Thank y'all for being here.